Hiya Hinsters! Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome to Happy Saturn Day. Let us just open up this Asda Cafe Latte <laughs> Caramel. Mm. I do love a good cold coffee. <laughs> my name is Hinny. Mm, that is really good. I know you can't see us right now but promise you it's really nice. If you are near an Asda, <laughs> they have these really nice cafe lattes for just 88p. Bargain. But if you knew, <laughs> my name is Hini and I'm a spiritual astrologer. Do consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like what I do. So the other day, I did a poll on my Instagram. You can follow us, by the way, on Instagram at Queer Hinny. Um, but I asked the Hinsters what sort of astrology topic they'd like me to make videos on. Because if you didn't know, a lot of my videos that I've made have really been for the community, for my audience, with the exception of the sort of transit series that I make some moon watch and the creme brulee stream series and the mars series outside of that i do like to take your requests and if it also interests me i'll probably make a video for your request and sometimes it's really cool like one of my videos which was for sagittarius rising with pluto in the first house that has over 3000 views and like over 100 likes and then another time I can make a request video and it, it might literally just be you who watches it. <laughs> but either way, um, because sometimes these request videos are very specific, but either way, I hope you gain something from it because that's kind of the whole point. I think a lot of um, general astrology topics can be found on YouTube, but if you'd still like me to cover something that you feel hasn't been covered enough um, or you just want to hear my take on it, then I might uh, do your request. Uh, but keep in mind, I have a schedule, I have other jobs as well, so it might not come out like proper, you know, snappy snappy quick, but it will be on my list. So anyway, I did a poll on Instagram, and one of you has wanted us to do a video on the anoretic degrees. So to talk more about, this was my um, long-time hints to Sarah, actually, um, so I hope you're listening and that you get this and that you like it, Sarah. But um, yeah, the anoretic degrees, which I kind of touched on a little bit in my degrees in astrology video. And I thought this is a great question to go a little more in depth, just a little. <laughs> and this is going to be there for part two of what I'm going to make a degrees series. So I'm going to make this the second part of my degrees in astrology series. Now, the first thing I want to say, similar to the part one of this series, which you should check out if you haven't already, um, is that, so the degrees in astrology or in your birth chart that probably most of the hinsters are familiar with and use, these degrees are obviously something quite strongly connected to numerology. And we need to keep in mind, I feel that this numerological approach to astrology can sometimes get us too bogged down in the technical dictates rather than whether or not we actually feel significant effects from these numbers that can't otherwise be felt from the planetary or other astral placement on its own. I'm also, by the way, going to put up a natal chart for the date February 17th, 2021, so that you can see and get a chart visual. Just an example. You can see the sun, which is that yellow <laughs> circle with a dot in the middle, and the sun is at 29 degrees in Aquarius, or at what is called the anoretic degree sometimes. So if you've been a hinster for a wee while, You'll know that I've often referred to this 29th degree, which is another uh, term again for the anoretic degree, as the highest part of the boiling point 
which I tended to read as the sort of 27 to 29 degree range, wherein the energy of the planetary placement or transit is more intense, more saturated, uh, more ready to spill over at this degree, almost like a full moon culmination moment. However, as my practice has developed, I'm personally finding that these degrees, this numerology is more often arbitrary and not that significant to the client, to the individual. Yet the client or individual would sometimes be worried that this high number means something bad. This is probably because, as I've heard a lot of astrologers say, and as I've been reading, the anoretic degree is paired with this word crisis, quite often, <laughs> a crisis, which is obviously a bit alarming. I mean, if you have a 29 degree sun and someone tells you that this is very critical or that your sun is in crisis, well, you'd probably be worried, right? <laughs> or at least intrigued as to what this crisis is all about. I mean, also that is sometimes the trap of numerology. It is the devil in the numbers, if you like, or the numerological detail. I talked about this as well in Capricorn season and my sort of January astrology video as well, I think. And I do recommend Paulina Ortkina, the YouTuber. Um, I will link her in the description below if you want more on sort of that. <laughs> but I'm always, anyway, saying on my channel that this is just, you know, my own take. And I'm definitely not dismissing the significance of numbers and numerology. And obviously you're your own person, right? However, I'm more of the view that yes, numerology is its own thing. And that sometimes it can it just can't be slapped onto our astrology or onto astrological readings so arbitrarily. And that each individual as a spirit has a particular pool of numbers that means something very special and significant to them, which cannot be represented by an astrologer looking at these arbitrary chronological degrees in a circular chart. You know, for example, you might have the, the number 13 is really significant to you, or the number three, or whatever the frick the number is, it's really special and significant to you. And that is not really represented necessarily just in the chart. It's somewhere else. It's somewhere outside of most of these Hellenistic technical practices of astrology, but it's still spirit, spirituality. Um, so anyway, as I outlined in part one of this new series, it's kind of like how due to the dictates of Roman empirical calendars and the whole numerological power of that, you know, most of us are convinced that January is the new year while also practicing forms of astrology, put, which put the middle of March as the new year. Like, it obviously is in conflict and doesn't make sense. And so it's the same here. You have your own personal numbers that actually mean something to you. Maybe it's just one number, right? <laughs> but the degrees in your birth chart are most likely just degrees used to more accurately describe or more technically describe a planet's location in your chart. Like, if you even care about that, it's just there to literally tell you exactly where it is. And then you even have degrees of degrees, right? Yeah, I'm sure you've seen that in your chart, you know, to, to denote the minutes as well, sometimes, or the seconds. But okay, let's look a wee bit anyway into why the anoretic degree is a crisis degree. <laughs> Sorry for the drama, I'm a bit high today. But according to the darkpixieastrology.com, and I'm going to reference any sources below in the description if you're interested. The anoretic degree is, and I'm quoting, seen as a point of crisis energy because it's the very last degree of a sign. And according to Dog Pixie, it can indicate a period where we, we're going to feel a major urge to get things started or finished while we still have the chance before the progression moves into a new sign. And so here we also get this word progression, referring 
uh, sometimes to techniques used by Hellenistic astrologers to look not just at your birth chart for illumination, but at your progressed chart, which is based off what your natal chart looks like if you were born on the same date and time, but moving each of your natal placements forward, one sign for every year of your current actual age. But anyway, we're not talking about progressions or progressed charts today, but I am interested in how some of these later astrological techniques are quite vested, not only in your original natal astrology, but also what critical things might have changed for you right now. And sort of contorting you away from your astro inception and toward different types of evolved chart. So yes, we're often tempted to care a lot about this moving on of things, the progression of things. And so the immediacy of the 29 also <laughs> moving into the zero naturally then suggests something critical, something moving along. But really, to me, this is really just more about the switching of energies, the transitioning into new energies, which even from the 29th to the zero degree, I don't think we as individuals feel it so immediately or critically because energy is this transitionary thing and it doesn't just magically switch on and off. But anyway, the Dark Pixie also mentions the anoretic degree in relation to transit astrology as well. So that's, you know, what the planets are doing right now and what a planet at the 29th degree right now moving into the zero degree might mean for us. And Pixie states that this can show a time when the whole world is struggling with intense, aggravating energy. And yeah, I do sometimes see astrologers warning here on YouTube, warning people to stay indoors. And sometimes I've done this as well, right? The warning people to stay indoors or not get into new relationships and so on when a planet is currently transiting at the 29th degree. I guess what I would want to say to the hinsters, if you're somewhat anxious about this crisis or this collective aggravation, uh, which by the way I feel is very often misguided by the particular astrologer's local political environment and the general interests of their audience, especially if that astrologer is making money off their audience, but I just say for us to like take a step back, to detach from what I or an astrologer has said or says, and to just feel the actual energy, the actual situation for yourself. Do you feel in crisis? Are you aggravated? Is this 29 number really threatening you? Are we able to feel outside of this particular numerological box or are we trapped in it and simply acting according to what we're told we must do when this degree is indicated a lot of the time if not all the time we really need to get back to our actual personal spirit and to our own meditative space and state of mind some people call this being present right or just being to see through all these numbers and techniques and jargon or language. And then, then we can feel out what is truly significant and what is just arbitrary or sometimes what is totally wrong. And it's tricky sometimes because only you will know this. <laughs> only you will know at the end of the day. And okay, but anyway, according to Beyond Binary Wiki, the anoretic degree can lead to energies being intensified in problematic ways, or it allows the energy of the sign to be fully integrated in a way more whole than any other position or decan. So basically, like with any sign energy, you know, zodiacal energy or planetary archetype or planet, it can be good, bad or ugly right? Because you also have your own free will, for one, but also because depending on what and how your spirit experiences, one person's 29th degree moment can be totally different to another's. 
and I'm also kind of arguing that the 29 doesn't matter. So in that same breath, one person's nine degree <laughs> moment might be different to another or just as powerful um, as the 29th. And because, you know, we are energy workers and we are free spirits and that doesn't mean that we always take advantage of transits necessarily, nor does it mean that we're necessarily dictated by them. It's always going back to this weather analogy, you know, the weather, sunshine, rain, <laughs> wind, tornadoes, and how it's usually, not all the time, but usually it's up to you whether or not you stay indoors or you take shelter, regardless of what type of weather it is outside, and regardless also of what the weather forecaster told you or is telling you to do. Now, according to astro.com, the anoretic degree is one of these power degrees. Although remember how in part, um, in part one, we discussed the degrees in sort of pre-Hellenistic Egyptian astrology and how these degrees divided over 30 different baktu or 30 different, uh, over 30 different deities and so they all all the degrees had power and significance because every single one of them represented a particular deity and they weren't only numbers used to mark the chart of the sky astro.com describes the anoretic degree as being poised for change due to the fact so we are poised for change maybe if we have this in our charts um, due to the fact that traditional astrologers awarded the malefics rulership over the final degrees of the signs. The malefics, by the way, being what many astrologers term Mars and Saturn. But remember that this traditional, quote-unquote, traditional astrology is really mostly Hellenistic astrology and that this assignment of planets to the decans came much later and as a sort of watering down of the deity degree points that I mentioned earlier, uh, watering them down into 10 degree decans. Astro.com, as like many other astrology sources and as with many astrologers, um, it claims that the anoretic degree is very fatalistic, or that's its representation, even though surely the whole of your chart is your fate and not just one part. But anyway, that this 29th degree can create lots of suspense, danger even, that it is thirsty for completion or it represents us as being thirsty to complete something. Because, of course, it marks the approach to the beginning of the new sign, the next sign. I guess what I'm saying <laughs> on my own channel is that we don't, I guess I'm suggesting that we don't get too tangled up in the dramatic fatalism of this anoretic degree, that we don't overly read into the numerology of it all. I'm not saying though that planets getting closer to the end of a sign are not more saturated with their occupied sign's energy. I actually think they are. They do mature. I, I just don't think it has to be so alarming that the planet moves on into the next sign or that you're destined for something negative to happen to you. If anything, surely having a higher degree planetary placement means you're even more prepared for the embracing of that future energy. Because one sign is always striving to emulate the next sign if we are to believe or adopt the anti-clockwise sort of way of reading the charts in the zodiac. One sign is always striving to emulate the next. Whereas if the planet has only just entered a sign, it might actually have a long way to go before it's going to reach the point that it emulates or gets the hang of the energy of the next sign. It's like if you're in a car in a tunnel, you're most likely going to start to see the light at the end of that tunnel. You're going to start to adjust your vision to the outside or to the differently lit space of what lies past the end of that tunnel. And in fact, you're going in the direction of the end of the tunnel anyway. So there's this sense, in fact, I feel, 
of anticipating the next space or the next sign, the next energy, and not that we're going to be so surprised or in crisis. But, you know, obviously I might be wrong and I don't know your experience. Again, I'll end this part of the degrees series with this, that we, that we always remember we were and always will be spirits. You know, way before any of these astrological techniques came about and, and that we are ultimately quite capable of receiving, intuiting, whether or not something is actually resonating for us or whether or not something actually has any effect on us. And again, it goes back to my point of, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> you will know. And also, you know, we can take this right back even to the Sumerians and the ziggurats when we're pretty sure men, yes, men, <laughs> they would stand on pedestals and make important readings and statements about the sky, which they would feed to kings, these interpretations, feed them to kings and courts and emperors. And, and so there's always been a highly, or for a very, very, very long time, there's always been a, a highly political and masculine agenda when it comes to some astrological techniques. And I think I touched on this in the first episode, actually, of how sometimes it's really just to obfuscate things, to confuse us, uh, especially with the, the hyper techniques that exist now. Sometimes it's just obfuscation. Um, but anyway, the Roman Emperor Tiberius, for example, it is said, he threw astrologers off the cliffs of Capri if he didn't like <laughs> what the astrologers said or if he got bored of them. I mean, he did a whole host of other pretty psychotic things to people, but I'm just talking here about the astrologers. Um, but, you know, how come they didn't predict their fate? Were they just not really astrologers or very good? Or do we actually forego our spirit for the esteem of certain practices and sometimes to our peril? But anyway, I'm getting a bit adrift now. I do hope <laughs> that this episode, this little take on the anorectic degree was helpful. And I hope it provides another angle when it comes to some of the interpretations of the anorectic degree and having 29 degree placements in our own birth charts. I think, yeah, it's good to just maybe think of this question. Do we forgo our spirit sometimes for the esteem of certain astrological practices? So that's all I've got for you. Have a happy Saturn day. I will see you in the next one. I love you very much. Take care. Mwah.